Hello, my fellow hunters. Uh, this is Hiroshi Scheib, and this is Hiroshi's Treasure Hunters. And on this episode, we're going to discuss um, the mini hunt and uh, some critiques that people have been having about um, the game being played so far. And one of them uh, is a long Reddit post, but it has some very valid concerns and critiques that people have had uh, about the game, particularly like the nature of which the um, clues are being dispensed, how frequent they're being dispensed, uh, s some of the communication issues uh, with the game makers and the players, uh, things of that nature, and we'll get into that uh, towards the end of the episode. But I wanted to talk about the mini hunt. So the game makers from the very beginning, particularly Eric Meltzer, who's uh, pretty much the main to go to guy PR for Satoshi Treasures, uh, has stated that there's going to be a series of mini hunts throughout the game in addition to the clues released for the for the keys. And one of these uh, mini hunts, or actually there's two. There's the art tour, which with the picture of the exhibit that took place uh, at the same time as the Magical Crypto Conference. Now, a number of people have made inquiries and tokens, and I have not really seen any consistent public information about any disclosure of keys or any solutions associated uh, with that particular mini hunt that took place um, May 11th through the 12th as far as retaining a key. Uh, but there is a hunt that actually has a prize going on that's taking place now in uh, New York, which co coincides with another crypto conference, which is the Consensus Crypto, crypto Conference. Uh, I think I spoke about this the last time when we did the update I, when we talked about uh, where Eric Meltzer was and I saw the Jesse, Jesse Wan and I believe Dovi, not yet, yeah, Jesse Wang and Dovi Wan were handing out business cards that I, we were hoping that maybe, or at least I was hoping that there would be more um, distribution of clues and keys and other places not centered around, like maybe the states. Uh, maybe a bit more global. Granted, and we'll do an update on the hunted key, uh, the hunted key was um, global, and that proved to be a bit of an issue for some people, I guess. And we'll get into that as well, an update on that. But it took place in New York, and I guess we should talk about the nature of the hunt and the price, which is, um, well, the price is $500 in BTC. So it started... Well, let's get into it. Okay. So, this Tososhi uh, Treasures uh, main uh, Twitter account disclosed that uh, Manhattan's mini hunt is on. Scan 5 out of 10 ST stickers to win $500 in BTC. SSS combined uh, minus T5. So, you have to have 5 out of the 10 scans, if you will, or any of those 5 if, out of 10 to be able to get to the... Um, Bitcoin address uh, and I'm assuming right here in the corner here if you look at this picture See if we can zoom in a bit I'm thinking this over here where the arrow is at is where the uh, Stickers are at and they're located throughout Manhattan and this was disclosed May 14th uh, two days ago another clue um, tweeted by the uh, official count uh, again stating if you find five keys to take a wallet uh, and showing uh, another location if you will now I'm not sure exactly how the um, locations are linked together if you were supposed to be able to uh, figure out the where the different keys are but they did tweet at least three of these tweets so far and encourage people to uh, DM them for coordinates and if you actually have scanned one of these uh, clues or keys, if you will, they would forward you to the next location. Um, I haven't yet heard if anyone has obtained um, all, the, you know, five of these out of these ten keys to uh, receive the prize. Uh, it's been two days, but um, we'll see, I guess. I have a link in the show notes to uh, the tweets, so if you're in New York or know somebody who's in the New York location and it hasn't been solved yet, I guess you can say that you still have an opportunity to obtain $500 in BTC. Now on the update on the hunted key. So, 
Wednesday what, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time was the due date where uh, field agents two and three, if you haven't um, been able to contact them uh, or anything of that nature, uh, their keys will go back into the vault. And uh, if you click on the research assistant on the website now, uh, they updated it, uh, I believe, on Wednesday. I did believe it was yesterday. Uh, it states that the clue has been retired, the hunted key has been found, and the additional keys with agents 2 and 3 have been returned to the vault. Now, agents 2 and 3 both had separate different keys from one another, and different key from agent 1. So if you had the opportunity or were able to obtain agents 1, agent 2, and agent 3, you would have had additional keys. They were both separate and different from one another. Uh, but it seems that, as far as the game makers are concerned, this key is done. And those particular keys that Agent 2 and 3 had are kapui. They're in the vault like Disney, and we will not see them again, if you will. Which is kind of disappointing, because I know all the way almost up to, pretty much up to what people considered like the time frame that these uh, keys were going to get locked up, people are still searching trying to get people together, getting op the objects, the books together, and trying to locate these individuals. But it appears either they didn't have the right names, uh, didn't have the people in the right locations. Uh, it, you know, the solution wasn't obtainable for field agents two and three. Now, uh, Eric Meltzer has stated through the Telegram channel, the official one, for the Satoshi's treasure hunt. And I also have a link to the official accounts uh, down below in the show notes that he will do a write-up on how people could have been able to solve the haunted key and been able to find field agents two and three or at least how he would have gone about doing it how there was a solution so there will be a blog about that uh, when that will be released I'm not certain but it's something he stated that he is willing to do for people now on some minor note, uh, the Twitter account has changed its avatar, its little logo. Um, if you are working on the Earth key, you can almost see partially this new logo on the on the clue that exists, uh, the final clue, the Russian doll clue, if you will. You can partially see the same type of. Um, type I think it's typography or uh, the lettering of the font if you will for uh, Satoshi's treasure on the uh, picture item itself but I just thought it, sh it should update people just because of what happened last week with the kind of fake fan site um, that would put up that looked exactly like Satoshi's treasure but was it, it had uh, Satoshi's S-A-T-O-S-H-I-S-T-R-E-A without the S, U, R, E, and had his own little hunt going on uh, to know that, you know, they changed their avatar and they have a different look. Which leads us into the, uh, the next topic here. So the signing of clues and keys. Uh, this is something that the game makers have promised and this is something they're going to do. I think this is, uh, you know, they're beginning emails from people as well as comments through Twitter, Telegram, and I guess you can say other channels. Uh, maybe even in person now that they're that uh, some of the game makers are, are going out to conferences uh, but this is from their official account uh, they released it uh, the 15th which was yesterday um, to clarify we're so far citing only clues found in the wild to discourage, discourage fake clues if it would be useful for hunters we can also sign the clues on the site and they you know they again uh, retweeted about the uh, basically this is a comment suite on all future que all feature keys on the site and in the wild will be signed with our PBG key. The fingerprint is this, just to verify that you know this particular clue for a key is coming from them. If it's not a fake fan site or disinformation that might be populating through the different Discord, uh, Reddit, or Telegram channels. Which brings us to this other tweet uh, that came the same day. Uh, cool stuff in the pipeline hunters can look forward to. A tool providing you have a key. A mini game involving inviting friends, physical clues that don't require travel, and a really fun mini game involving the business cards. So the business cards, at least three of them, have been distributed out there in the wild. Um, 
Not sure what the mini game will might be, but the tool for providing that you have a key, it was up briefly, like I think we want to say the second week um, that the game became live and then it was taken down. And basically what they'll do is they will allow you to uh, import whatever key that you may find to verify that it in fact is a legitimate key or any key that might have been publicly disclosed by any clan or individual member. You know whether or not they actually have a key or not or just talking a bunch of smoke or, or bullshit if you will. And I think this is all well and good. I think this is all well and good. I think this is something that the, the game makers kind of should have been doing from the very beginning. I know they got a little bit overwhelmed on how popular that the the game um, has become. Uh, they've disclosed at least 60,000 people have subscribed to, their, to the site itself to receive the email. And... Uh, so it's a bit overwhelming and all the different inquiries and how, how quickly some keys are found and the, the longer take for other keys, uh, the fact that people are hitting people up on LinkedIn and Twitter and messaging. I understand how they feel a bit uh, inundated. They, they probably didn't anticipate it to be this particular, um, almost a phenomenon, or at least it's a phenomenon within the cryptocurrency community, but I guess they didn't anticipate it to be uh, this amount of people really um, I wonder what they really thought maybe they thought it was only thousands or a couple thousand a thousand individuals being uh, participating who knows it'll be interesting uh, when they do in the next round of media uh, coverage about the game if they talked about what they actually planned the amount of people being involved um, but um, there are certain aspects I, I had anticipated that they would be a little bit better organized on. And I think that this Reddit post really clarifies some of the issues I think overall uh, that the community is having a little bit of. And mind you, we're still fairly early in the game. I mean, this is the fourth weekend, six keys. Um, and if you count the other two field, field agents, nine and the business card. It's supposed to be 10, so there might be potentially up to 12 keys out there. Uh, out of the 1,000 keys that can be disclosed, of, of which only 400, you need to retrieve the prize. Uh, so we're, we're fairly into this, but I think this Reddit post really does cover some of the critiques that people have had, or a little bit of the issues that people have had um, with the game makers and the disclosure of the clues and just how the game is being run thus far. So let's begin. Uh, this is by Reddit user uh, Forced to Play 2. Uh, is on the Reddit Satoshi's Treasure. Uh, that's the subreddit that this is under. And it's suggestions to the organizers. Uh, an open letter to the organizers of Satoshi's Treasure. I'm placing this here because the only contact information we have is on Twitter and it won't fit there. LOL. I had a very li have very little experience with digital currency. I was only one click away from buying 1,000 Bitcoins at the very beginning. Isn't that always the story? Got distracted and never completed the transaction. I could have been writing this from my own private island. I understand the concept of digital currency, but not much past that. I do have lots of experience with treasure hunts, real world, armchair, and online. I and probably everyone else here would like to see Satoshi hunt, Treasure Hunt be a success. To that end, I would encourage the organizers to do some research on what past large treasure hunts, successful and unsuccessful, to gain learnings they can use to better mold this treasure hunt. I think that that is something that they may not have done. And I don't know if that is a red flag, but I personally know, like, when I look something up, I always see if it's been done before. Sometimes I put, like, scam behind it fail, success, just to see what kind of terms or news articles or stuff like that populates. I try to figure out, I must not have been the only person to have this idea. There must have been other people that have done this. How did they did it, do it? When did they do it? How far back does it go? How important is it? Does it have any like real clear information, information on the subject? Is there a Wicca? Uh, I, it just doesn't seem like they've maybe not done their research in the regards to the running of the hunt. Now, the creation of the keys and 
that aspect of it and maybe the clues themselves, I think they have done a significant amount of research on that part. I think they've done the technical parts, but I don't think they have done the actual real world and social aspects of the game, which kind of fits in the cryptocurrency space if you think about it. There's been a couple of things I've always missed with projects, which is always like the UI, and I'll get back to that in a moment, and the, the social dynamic that people don't realize is actually fundamentally important. You're dealing with humans, whether you like them to or not, and you have to deal with the, the, the various little check boxes, the very basic bare minimum of, you might want to say, social relationships when engaging and interacting. And there's a lot of different cryptocurrency projects and even blockchains that just totally miss that. And even people in general don't take that in account. And UI. UI is a huge problem in this space. And that, again, goes back to the social aspect of just, um, there's a podcast I listen to and also participate um in called the Bitcoin podcast and I have a link in the show notes and it's um, <clears throat> they talk about what's it called I think the term is general purpose user or general people purpose user GPPU I think is the term they've created where it talks about just the general people they don't they're not interested in how the microwave works <coughs> really she hulk my cat well it's not my cat but he is a cat she hold ticker too they're not interested in how their microwave works they're interested maybe in price the size the look if you will because depending on you know where they're going to put it within their home um what type of home they have they want to make sure it fits you know it can be one of those big conventional ones it could be a small one because they live in a dorm or a small apartment and if it works, if it functions properly, if it does all the things that they need it to do, they don't care about the, the innards of how the microwave works. All they care about is when they hit two minutes and start, it functions. <laughs> and I think a lot of people miss that aspect of the UI concept where if I enter the information and I hit send, it's going to do its thing. And it's very simple, very basic A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. If you look at a lot of the different apps right now, it's just boop, boop, boop. That's it. It's a very minimal amount of input of information. And I think a lot of that is missing from this space. A very simple, clear, uh, general people purpose user interface, usage, really. So where was I in this? Uh, okay. <clears throat> so to the end, I would like to share my observations of my experience. Uh, communication. Consistent, clear, verified, one location. Right now, you have Jesse Wan, Dobi, uh, Jesse Wang, Dobi Wan, Eric Melser, and, and uh uh, the official Twitter site of, for the treasure hunt tweeting different clues and different bits of information. Uh, Ron Shores of the World's Greatest Treasure Hunt did this well through a website. So they had a website and a Facebook page. So two locations. So you have one to four Twitter accounts and then you have uh, the website. And then you have the Telegram channel. And maybe something off of Keybase. Um, that hasn't been disclosed that they're going to do because Keybase has a uh, chat function um, and group function as well but I don't think they're going to go there pretty much sticking to Telegram um, that can be a bit confusing and a bit of an issue um, all clues were posted to the Facebook page and clearly noted as a clue uh, with Eric Melser using his basically his personal Twitter account you don't know what is a clue and what is him just tweeting? Suggestions. If Twitter is going to be the primary communication channel and add a link on your website to it, 
That way people can easily find and know it's a verified communication. Currently right now that that's not on there and I, I that's giving me pause considering like I said we're about six weeks in and I, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, suggestions. If tw okay, so only communication hunt information through the at Toshi Twitter account. No clues for personal accounts. That's fine because the mini hunt thing was spread out. You know, it, it would be nice if it just does the, the official Twitter account for all cl clues. So whoever is running that account uh, is the only person who tweets. So the other game makers or anyone who needs to disclose information, email or communicate through DMs. This is what needs to be tweeted. All right. Tag any communications that contain hunts, clues, slash information so it's clear. So maybe Toshi's treasure clue. Wow. Be specific on live events. This week or next couple of days is not enough. That doesn't give enough detail for those not in the exact location to participate. I understand the event this week in, in NYC was not for a key. At the same time, I don't think you understand that any opportunity to learn more about the organizers' thinking is extremely useful. It starts at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday and will end by 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday would be a much better clue. So I think that's important, particularly like even though they disclosed that they were going to this conference and that Eric Meltzer was going to make a speech and that they had these business cards, which are keys if you get, you get all the business cards. Um... I think some clarity stating that, hey, we're going to be here at this location from this time for this amount of information, be there, and, and just give a week's notice. Like, these conferences are planned a month ahead. You're going to know, like, months ahead most of the time that you're going to be at these conferences. And if this game is planned out as they say they are, they should have it on the calendar and should be tweeting, you know, a month ahead or two weeks ahead that they're going to be there in this time frame and what it's about. Clarify the hunter key. Did each entry have a separate unique key? If you got all three, would that be the three separate keys counted towards the 400? That needed to be clarified right off the bat because everyone thought they had to have each of these field agents. And the fact that it proven to be difficult to find the other two field agents it would have been important to know right off the bat that these are three separate keys. People may have gone about it a different way. Um, it was a bit frustrating. And particularly the fact that these participants, these field agents, are actually not part of the game per se. They're just maybe friends or only participating in this particular key. They, they had There was a time clock right off the bat. I think people would have been able to utilize their time more efficiently. Maybe their resources more differently, be more cooperative, reach out to a different set of people than they already did because they thought they had the time instead of putting a little bit more urgency on their, their hunt for the clue. Um, now there's links to the show notes. I actually looked up, or not actually the show notes, but there's Reddit post about Sh Ron Short's World's Greatest Treasure Hunt. I actually remember hearing about this. Um, about the book and people engaging in this. Um, I wasn't big, too big on scavenger hunts per se online or anything of that nature, but I remember this going on uh, like a, a few years back. So <clears throat> he breaks uh, down this pretty good example of how a, uh, a particular online and real world treasure hunt went. Interactions. Uh, Michael Stater of A Treasure Trove um, and Secrets of the Owl Master Dad had no communication with hunters. That made it easy for him and the hunters, and nobody heard information that others didn't. Ron Shore had lots of communication with hunters, in person, at events, email, phone, and Facebook. He was pretty good at not providing additional information when press. There were a couple times when he mistakenly said something to a hunter that he shouldn't have. He would then post that information to Facebook so that everyone had it and not just one person. So I think that's very important because I think some people have messaged, I have messaged Eric Melser about getting business cards. Some people were able to get replies back stating, you know, there will be a mechanism or a way for people to get business cards, but not, not that information is not exactly publicly disclosed to everybody, and then it eventually was publicly disclosed. So there, there needs to be a clarity and communication about anything doing with the particular hunt in itself it needs to be disclosed to everybody and not specifically 
to one person unless it's specifically tied to them figuring out the clue and getting the key. And just like the field agents, you know, it's always supposed to be one person receiving or one group receiving that particular key. Suggestions. In what ways do the organizers want to or not want to interact with hunters? How do the organizers make sure they're not providing more information than they should via the hunter interactions? And clarify the business cards from earlier this week. What was their purpose? Do they have clues? And how would they affect the main hunt? Now, this has to do with the fact that the business card disclosure information came out the first week of the hunt and was in a podcast. It would be nice if there was a blog post of you know about the business cards and about any uh, information that the the game makers disclose publicly, whether it be um, media for inter interviews, podcasts, conference speeches, is also disclosed there so that there is a consistent clarity of how the information is being dispensed and everyone has that knowledge and access. Uh, trust. There is an implicit trust that goes along with the treasure hunt. The hunter's trust of the treasure is real. The hunter's trust that the treasure will be awarded should the hunt be solved. The hunter's trust that the organizer will provide enough solvable clues to complete the hunt. So this is again an issue where it was disclosed the first week through a podcast that the, the Bitcoin address uh, which contained the prize was supposed to be a clue and they've stated a couple different ways that they are going to disclose that address, but people are, people want to know. People want to know that, yes, there's a verifiable, verifiable address. Yes, there is a disclosed amount, you know, whether it be 190, 170, 200 Bitcoins in this address. That is his Toshi Treasure Hunter address. It's for that prize. And if you get the private key, it's yours. Uh... The hunters trust that it can be done in a reasonable time, i.e. not five to ten years. And let's get into this. All of the above points are important because a hunter has to invest time. This is a decision. If you achieve the above trust, you get lots of hunters. If you break that trust, you're going to start to lose hunters. Um, he's going to get into why the, uh, the reasonable time. Website. Having an interactive website as part of the hunt is a vulnerability. Double, triple check everything before it goes up there. Make sure nobody can hack it to achieve an advantage. Make sure nobody can scan it to find things they shouldn't. And this goes to the trust factors above. Tools. Providing the following tools to hunters will be very useful. A way, a way to verify the key you have in possession is valid. I think that should have been up the first week, personally. Uh, a way to verify that the key that someone else has is valid. None of these tools can be used to find ways through hacking or brute force. Communication when they will be available. Um, they have disclosed that, that that's something that they're doing, but they have not set a date of when that's coming up on the website. Belonging. Your price is one million to in Bitcoin. You need 400 keys to win. 1,000 keys will be released to help achieve that. If you release a clue a day, that will be just over a year to get 400 keys and three plus years for 1,000 keys. A clue a week would be seven years to get 400 keys and 20 years for 1,000 keys. So yeah, the, the disclosure of the keys, the time frame is a little bit, yeah. Suggestions. Commit to some time frames for release of keys. IG, 64 before the end of 2019, two a week. Uh, add some shorter term prices. Um, Ron Shore did a great job with this, a solid silver eagle for each chapter solved leading up to the solid gold eagle for the entire hunt. I'm assuming this is associated for the type of different prizes for that particular hunt. It helped build trust with the hunters, uh, gave them a smaller task to start with that was more believable and that can be achieved. This is something with the, you can say they're trying to do with the mini hunts, but I don't think they're pressing that quite enough. Provide a lot of press when each chapter was solved i.e. $5,000 for the person to get 100, 200, and then 300 keys. So that's, that's just, you know, some criticism. Uh, please don't take any of the above as criticism. Um, it's constructive critiques, I would say. I understand the treasure hunt has just started. It's not your full-time job. My understanding that this is this is their game. This is their business that's coming out of prim primitive ventures. So this is kind of their full-time job, I'm, I'm assuming, from what they've disclosed in the media. Maybe I and a lot of others are misreading that. 
At the same time, I encourage you to take the learnings from the past large treasure hunts to make this one a success. So, yeah, I think that they do need to get the tools up. I think they also should disclose because with the recent key, and I'll get into it in the weekly cap uh, recap. This is not the first time that stenography um, was a tool that you need to know how to use, but I will get into that when we discuss that, but I think there could be some official cryptography tools that could be attached to the website for all the different OSs like the Mac, Linux, and um, Windows that people can use, particularly people that are not as familiar with these type of tools and have to hunt through the internet and find all these broken um, I'll get into it, but you know, some official tools that they might be necessary for the game. Uh, again, verification the key thing, it, it needs to come up. It really, really does. Um, a time frame for when these keys are being released. Uh, I know there was a significant chunk because of, I guess you could say, conferences and things coming online, but they, they kind of need to release these keys at a, a much quicker pace. Um, and again, it's okay if not all the keys are going to be solved or it takes longer for a key to be solved. Um, if you have five keys or five clues being released a week and two out of three or three this week or something like that, it, I think it make it for a more engaging game and allow for clans and groups to focus on the keys that they know they can solve and, and maybe start trading. Maybe some people have a better... Uh, network of people globally and so they can do the find a person or find the, the thing in the real world better and might be able to trade that for a group that has a stronger cryptography understanding and able to break apart a clue better than one particular clan. They can start getting these trade-offs going on. Um, things of that nature. Um, so really for me, and something that this has brought up has been the disclosure of the Bitcoin address, um, the communication, just one platform really to disclose the official communication. If the website is the go-to place, yeah, communicate through Twitter, but also have it up on the website as well, a linkage if you will. Um, and then a the time frame for when these clues are going to be released. I think it gives people a better understanding a better time if this is supposed to be done within a year yeah it's early but we need to get kind of going really so that's pretty much it um <clears throat> maybe down below you can comment your own personal suggestions which you think that the game makers can probably do um i'm hoping they saw this and took this with you know not a grain of salt but with a a good heart, if you will, this criticism, or I mean, it's a criticism, but critique, but, um, we'll see, um, that's pretty much it, like I said, the, the mini hunt so far, I have not seen anyone stating that they have solved it, or has been issued by the game makers that has been solved, then again, you know, there wasn't an address that was disclosed, so people can see that there's a prize amount, and is worth, you know, 500 BTC for people to come and get um, um, those type of things uh, when I do the update for the week I think I'm going to probably do it for Saturday released because people still or at least it hasn't been disclosed that the current clue the earth key has been solved uh, but um, you know that's it for now um, we have a mini hunt constructive criticism and that the hunted key the two field agent keys have um, gone back to the vault like Disney and uh, we'll see how things are going to go. Uh, thank you all for listening. You know, like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you like. 